students let us today discuss about the topic called osteochondritis desiccans osteochondritis desiccans is an idiopathic disease actually which affects the uh, articular cartilage that overlies the subchondral bone and we can find in the joints and this happens actually due to some kind of uh, loss or restriction in the blood flow to the articular cartilage. Uh, this may result in separation and instability of the segment of the cartilage and ultimately when this uh, segment or fragment of this cartilage dislodges, separates away, it moves in the joint space and that can lead to pain, loose body, for, loose body formation, joint effusion and obstructions in the joint movements. If we see the relevant anatomy in the knee, that is, uh, we have seen the femur, the tibia and the patella are the three main components of the knee joint. We have the uh, tibio fibular joints and we have the patello femoral uh, joint. And here you can see the cartilage which is uh, in a reddish color already there is a kind of an uh, you know a loss of uh, blood supply and because of that uh, osteonecrosis and these cartilage will slowly uh, start to crack and get dislodged and this fragment will be appearing in the joint as a bone or a cartilage chips so we all know that is a knee is a synovial joint and uh, already i told you the three main bones and the two main joints that is the tibia and the fem uh, femur and the femur and the patella where the patella sits on the trochlear groove of the femur now the articular bones are covered by the white shiny elastic cartilage which uh, roll and slide on the tibia, tibial plateau and the synovial fluid acts as a nourishing substance and lubricates the cartilage, lessens the friction. So in patients with osteochondritis desiccans, the subchondral bone with this articular cartilage doesn't get any blood supply anymore and starts for degeneration. Etiology we can divide into mainly this condition into two parts, uh, two types like juvenile and the adult and the main two main places in the knee joint where it uh, can appear are the femoral condyle especially the medial condyle where maximum of the joint forces acts then compared to the lateral uh, condyle or lateral surface and in 10% of cases it is also located in the patella and also it is seen that it is more in males than uh, females and sometimes bilaterally the both the knees are affected so here is diagrammatic representation of zone wise like here this is the classic 69% here extended classic 6% inferocentral inferocentral 13% anterior portion and the causes are still unknown and mostly it is multifactorial that is it is like many factors are responsible for this it can arise as a result of direct trauma or when the articular cartilage is damaged for example, uh, during a fall, maybe a twist injury, a sprain, etc. So the tibial plateau could also damage one of the condyles of the femur. And another cause is the repetitive microtrauma due to high levels of participation in sports and which is also a uh, vital factor. Other than this, there may be chemical changes at the surface located in the subchondral bone. There may be genetic conditions, growth disorders, hereditary factors, ischemia, etc. Coming to the stages, we can divide this condition mainly into four distinct stages. Stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. 1 is the where the due to ischemia, osteonecrosis begins to arise in a part. Then, because of uh, loss of uh, or restrictions or the tissue is not well vascularized. Stage 2 is when the osteonecrosis is found in the subchondral bone bone fully. Stage 3 is after this osteonecrosis there will be a starting of uh, defragmentation or partially detaching the lesions that is a desiccancy in C2. Stage 4 is the loosening of the affected bone fragment 
and the corresponding cartilage of the articular cartilage this fragment falls between the moving parts of the joint and blocks it so it is sometimes called as the joint mouse in the bone that is it refers to the bone fragment that roams in the joint and it is because white in color here uh, three pictures are seen the degeneration starts or the osteonecrosis and then it tries to form a crack and tries to detach but still it is connected and in the third picture you can see that the fragment is separated completely from the condyle also sometimes we can divide into grade 4 here there is a starting of the ischemia and the uh, necrosis uh, might just set up in and here it is progressing the uh, loss of uh, vascularity increases then slowly it forms a crack and then it detaches forming a loose body the clinical presentation is that it has a uh, vague pain and swelling sometimes uh, stabbing pain with activity exaggerated knee swells simultaneously with the onset of the pain entire knee is irritated because of the loose pieces and it responds by producing extra sinusal fluid in the knee joint stiffness and feeling of instability giving away having the feeling of the knee bends you, you kind of a feeling of giving away the knee the knee joint is loose not stable then clicking or decrepitating sounds locking when a joints uh, the knee cannot be stressed but remain bent the knee is locked because the bone fragment is located between the bones of the knee joint OCD can exist for years without symptoms but suddenly it can cause discomfort due to heavy straining of the joint the late OCD findings might include quadriceps muscle atrophy and gait deviations on examination the knee you can feel warmer than the non-injured knee if you compare there is an intermittent swelling palpable quadriceps muscle go for wasting and atrophy because of the restriction in the movements restricted rom passive and active extension of the knee is limited catching or locking of the knee tbl external rotation during a gait fluid effusion because there is more production of discernible fluid or also uh, the knee fills with fluid of the inflammatory exudate it is also possible that the both capsular and non-capsular movements restrictions can be found during functional assessment and the severity depends on a possible herniation of the knee joint and the degree of joint irritation. The sensitive location of the abundant section of the osteochondral fracture can be felt when the knee is in 90 degree of flexion. There is a test called Wilson's test where the knee is held in 90 to 30 degree from full extension while rotating the tibia. The test is positive when the internal rotation is painful and the external rotation and relieves the symptoms coming to the diagnostic imaging or the investigative procedures uh, radiography magnetic resonance uh, then there is uh, technetium 99m pyrophosphate joint scintigraphy bone scans as well as arthroscopic examinations have been used in an attempt to uh, detect this situation or this condition the plain radiographs are easy to localize the lesion, determine the size and to assess the distal femoral physis. OCD may or may not be evident on the plain radiographs. Osteochondritis resicans uh, in views weight bearing anterior posterior posterior anterior tunnel at 45 degree knee flexion lateral and the Martian view. The MRI is a preferred choice to detect the location of the lesion and the size when not visible on the plain radiographs. With MRI, the status of the subchondral bone, the articular cartilage, and the stability of the osteochondritis desigenal lesion can be assessed. Here you can see the radiograph of an OCD lesion here. And uh, this is the fragment, the loose, which is already broken and detached from the condyle. And it is present as a separate fragment here. Differential diagnosis, there may be a lot of other conditions to rule out uh, like the meniscus and the collateral ligament injuries which we can do the physical examination and the tests. Uh, also inflammatory arthritis and then bone cysts, osteoarthritis, septic arthritis, idiopathic osteonecrosis. 
chondral separations, osteochondral fractures. Coming to the medical management, in minor cases, rest can be prescribed. Patient has to stop the activities for three to six months and the lesion will heal spontaneously, especially with the young adolescents. Normally, immobilization of the knee for a couple of weeks is sufficient in the treatment of the growing children. In case immobilization is insufficient, we would normally be the case for adults, a mobilization procedure must be started up. In this procedure, stretching exercises are performed. The range of motion and the strengthening ability of the muscles will be gradually increased in the next uh, three to six months. In the end of the case, the knee is not fully recovered, surgery could be necessary. Stages three and four are always treated surgically. Surgery is also required when the conservative treatment in stages 1 and 2 was inadequate or fails. It is recommended to treat surgically when the large part of the femoral condyle has been excavated because of the risk to develop osteoarthritis. Now, let us see some of these surgical techniques. Variety of surgical techniques exist for the management of articular cartilage lesions at the knee such as the osteochondritis desiccans. This include the use of arthroscopic lavage and debridement of the joint, radio frequency, energy, bone drilling, osteochondral autographs or allografts, internal fixation of the bone fragments by screws and sometimes the autologous chondrocyte implantation. Stages 1 and 2 articular cartilage is still intact and through the retrograde operation trying to tap into the affected bone from behind and clear it can be done. The advantage of this surgical technique is that the articular cartilage stays intact. Excision of the fragment and removal of the loose bodies, repair of the blood supply by drilling arthroscopically through the cartilage and the heart of uh, osteochondrosis into the healthy bones. Stabilization of the fragment through pinning or through screw fixation. Osteochondral autograft transplantation, which is OATS, osteochondral allograft transplantation, and autologous chondrocyte implantation, ACI, are some of the uh, choice uh, surgical techniques. Here you can see that uh, metal screws we have, uh, the, like the surgery has been done, and the part has been fixed because it is in its place, it is not yet detached, but it was just in the verge of breaking out so it can be easily put by the screws compression screws you can see in this x-ray then what is osteochondral autograft and allograft articular cartilage covers the ends of the bones and joints throughout the body so osteochondral grafting is a method of treating the cartilage injuries that expose underlying bone so osteochondral grafts replace both the articular cartilage on the surface and the underlying bone. An autograft is a piece of tissue taken from a healthy section of the joint and transplanted uh, to replace the chondral defects in the joint. These are two techniques used in our osteochondral autografting that is mosaic plasty and osteochondral autograft transfer system. And the osteochondral allograft uh, is a method of treating cartilage injuries that expose the underlying bone. An osteochondral allograft is a piece of tissue containing bone and cartilage that is taken from a de deceased donor to replace the damaged cartilage that lines the ends of the bones in a joint. So this is the difference between the autograft and the allograft. And the autograft, we can see the procedures called as the mosaic plasty and the osteochondral uh, autograft transfer system. So the mosaic plasty was introduced into the clinical practice in 1992 and it is based on the mosaic like transplantation of several small cylindrical plugs of bone and cartilage known as the osteochondral grafts to provide an even resurfaced area. Main advantage of this technique is that it helps to improve the patient's quality of life by eliminating the complaints caused by the lesions. Another advantage is that it delays further deterioration of the condition and during this procedure the patient's own bone and cartilage is used to resurface the lesion. So the allergic or the immunological reactions cannot therefore be expected following the mosaic plasty. So here you can see the picture of a mosaic plasty. These are plugs of bones and cartilage. The disadvantage may be some general complications that are common following lower limb surgery such as septic or thrombiambiotic embolic complications and that can be prevented by simple uh, strict aseptic conditions 
single shot antibiotics and drugs to prevent thrombosis. Surgery specific complications can include problems following removal of the cartilage at the donor site such as the patellofemoral complaints, pain or swelling following strenuous physical activity might be some of the uh, some of the disadvantages. Now PT management in stage 1 and 2 the condition is localized in the subchondral bone cartilage is still intact and it nourishment gets from the cyanable fluid. So in these two stages conservative therapy can be applied. The goals of this conservative therapy are pain reduction, promote the repair of the cartilage and prevent degeneration of the surface of the knee joint. There is no standard uh, treatment uh, lines, guidelines, but the immobilization, the adaptation of the strain is needed to so that the bone can heal. Two weeks of immobilization and partial support is recommended when having an acute injury. With children whose bones will still grow, the bone defect may heal by resting the joint. And the long term immobilization has to be prevented because joint motion is necessary for nutrition and strengthening of the cartilage and sports activities should be stopped temporarily. So this was about the conditions called osteochondritis the sequence particularly you, we saw that this is a condition affecting the articular cartilage by the loss of blood flow or the avascularity due to certain factors and ultimately the osteochondronecrosis osteonecrosis forms and the fragment slowly, slowly breaks off from the articular cartilage and it can present as loose bodies in the joint and the other problems which arises from this condition also we have seen the surgical uh, procedures and the uh, pathology so these are here are some references you can go through and uh, so thank you for viewing this video and i hope this will help you to understand this condition uh, better and any doubts please feel free to discuss thank you